Ready to pack your bags for orbit? Imagine a place where you only weigh one-sixth of your usual weight. That's the lunar-level gravity promised by the Voyager Station, the world's first space hotel set to launch in 2027. This groundbreaking project aims to transform space travel from an astronaut exclusive into the ultimate luxury tourist destination. So, what exactly is this space hotel? Forget everything you've seen of the International Space Station, which looks like a giant collection of tubes and solar panels. The Voyager Station is going for a completely different vibe, and the design is seriously cool. It's designed as a huge, rotating wheel. Imagine a giant Ferris wheel lying on its side, but it's orbiting the Earth about 500 kilometers up. This spinning motion is the absolute key to the whole operation. The station is enormous, it's planned to have a total of 24 living and activity modules. That's a lot of space. It's designed to hold about 400 people in total, including roughly 280 guests and over 100 crew members to run the place. That's like a small cruise ship floating around the planet. The company, Above Space, plans to start building this giant thing in 2026, with the doors opening to guests in 2027. Now, we have to keep it real. This is a huge undertaking, and we haven't seen the final funding go through yet. It's an ambitious timeline, but the company is definitely moving forward with their plans and is working on smaller projects first to test the tech. This is the most amazing part of the Voyager station design, so lean in for a second. If you've ever seen videos from the current space station, you know everything floats. That's because it's in a state called microgravity, or zero G. It's fun for a bit, but imagine trying to eat a proper meal or sleep for three days like that. The Voyager station solves this with one clever piece of physics, artificial gravity. Remember the big spinning wheel design? That rotation is the secret sauce. The station will spin about one and a half times every minute. When you spin an object, it creates a force pushing things outward. That's called centrifugal force. You feel this force when you spin a bucket of water over your head and the water stays inside. On the station, this spinning motion pushes people and everything else toward the outer rim of the wheel. This push acts just like gravity does here on Earth. Now, they aren't going for full Earth gravity right away. They're aiming for lunar level gravity, which is about one-sixth of what you feel right now. Think of it as moon gravity. You'd still be able to jump super high, but you could walk, you could use a shower, and your spaghetti wouldn't float away from your fork. This technology is a game changer because it means guests won't have to deal with the nasty side effects of long periods in zero G, like severe space sickness. This isn't just a glorified tin can with beds. This is meant to be a high-end luxury resort. They are fitting this station with amenities you'd expect from a five-star hotel on the ground, including full-service restaurants and bars that serve everything from traditional freeze-dried astronaut food to world-class cuisine. For fun and recreation, they're planning for a cinema, a concert hall, and a gym specifically designed for low-gravity sports. Think of being able to practically fly across a basketball court. Slam dunks are going to be easy. The rooms aren't tiny either. They range from small, standard hotel rooms to massive luxury suites and even full-on villas. Every single room will have a window with a view you simply can't get anywhere else. To get around this giant wheel, guests will use pressurized elevators and shafts that go from the central docking point, which is zero gravity, to the outer, gravity-enabled rooms. All right, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, the price. Because this is the very first of its kind, it's not going to be cheap. A short trip, we're talking three to three and a half days, is estimated to cost around $5 million per person. Yes, that's millions. You'd need to be seriously wealthy to afford this first wave of space tourism. This price is comparable to the amount people pay for a brief, non-orbiting flight with companies like Blue Origin, and it doesn't even include the necessary safety and physical training you'd have to go through. But here's the important part of the company's vision. They want to bring that cost down over time. Their big dream is that within 10 years, a trip to space could cost about the same as a high-end luxury cruise here on Earth. The major costs right now are just getting all the equipment and people up there. And as rockets become cheaper and more reusable, that price tag for everyone else should drop dramatically. 
Building a giant, rotating space hotel is not something you just jump into. You have to practice. That's why Above Space has a clever plan to build a smaller test version first, called Pioneer Station. Think of it as a boutique space hotel designed to hold only about 28 guests. Pioneer Station is basically a stepping stone, a way to prove the technology works, especially the crucial artificial gravity system, and to start generating some money before they tackle the massive Voyager Station. Pioneer Station is planned to be operational even earlier than the Voyager Station, They've also been building full-scale prototypes of the parts they need here on Earth, like a machine that builds the giant metal support structures in space. They are taking this step by step, starting small and working their way up to the colossal wheel. This is an awesome idea, but let's be real, building a hotel in space is one of the toughest engineering challenges ever. It's not a done deal, and there are some huge hurdles the company has to clear. The first big one is the cost. Building a project like this could easily cost tens of billions of dollars, requiring sustained and massive funding. Another huge hurdle is the engineering itself. Assembling a giant rotating structure in space is incredibly difficult. Everything has to be launched from Earth and put together piece by piece in orbit, requiring unprecedented precision and robotic assistance. Plus, since no one has ever done orbital tourism like this, Governments are still figuring out all the safety standards and rules. Finally, there are the dangers of space itself, like radiation and debris. The station needs excellent shielding to protect guests from space radiation and reliable systems to dodge or withstand impacts from space junk and tiny meteoroids, which can travel faster than a bullet. Even with all these challenges, the people behind the project are confident. Ultimately, the Voyager station is about more than just a place to sleep in orbit. It's about changing our relationship with space. It's not just for tourists either. The modules can also be used for things like commercial manufacturing that benefits from the low gravity environment, scientific research, and even industrial work. Imagine looking out of your hotel window and seeing the entire curve of the earth, continents, clouds, and oceans slowly passing by beneath you all from the comfort of your own room with gravity. That's the vision. It's the beginning of commercial space destinations, not just quick trips. If the Voyager station succeeds, it won't just be the world's first space hotel. It will open the door for a future where having a home or an office in orbit is a real possibility. It truly is the first step toward living and working permanently among the stars. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.